Hi, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for joining in. Uh, we have with me Nishchal Dua here. He's the director of uh, director of marketing for Airmeet. Uh, Nishchal is a remote working evangelist and co-founder of the Remote Work Summit and director of marketing at Airmeet. Uh, his session is something that I've also been like very, very keenly interested to uh, hear him out and see what he has to say and learn from him. It's about how virtual events can outperform your entire SaaS marketing playbook. Um, I, I won't take up uh, any more time, Mr. Let's let's go for it. Uh, would love to hear you out. Over Perfect. Here. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vikrant. Uh, I am hoping that you know people are able to see this. Okay, that's a decent enough reaction. Uh, it's just uh, yes, yes, Lalit. That's that's. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're giving it a shot. It's something new that we're trying out today, and we want to see how how you know what kind of a reaction we get here. So that's just uh, uh, a new way that we are going to try out uh, to make these presentations, make these uh, events and interactions a lot more uh, exciting, a lot more uh, engaging, and at the same time, try to kind of present better information to you guys. So thank you all for joining us here today. I think uh, it's, it's a jam-packed session today. Uh, we will try and cover a lot of different things here, but essentially what we're trying to get at is how can events play a huge role in almost everything that you're doing across your SaaS marketing playbook, right? Uh, but even before that, uh, I just want to quickly, okay, so everyone's uh, using a lot of emojis. That's, that's amazing. I want to also highlight that we have a raise hand option. So if any of you are interested in joining us on the stage, uh, it's always a really good uh, interaction, right? Uh, it, it'll be amazing if some of you can raise your hand either now or towards the end. We can have you on stage. We can take a couple of questions live. Uh, or you could share your experiences of what has worked, what hasn't worked for you in the past. So would really want to see that happening. And uh, at the same time, while we wait for a couple more folks to tune in and let them all get settled, I just want to quickly get to know uh, who you guys are and uh, how can we work uh, better and how we can do a better session here together. So just going to drop a quick poll here and uh, I'll see how many responses we get. Essentially, we're trying to see uh, what's the mix of people here at the session, right? So if you guys can quickly just drop in your votes there, I see one vote that's come in so far. And that's three, seven. That's a good turnout. Okay. So essentially, this, this poll is going to help me and help you guys also understand who's participating at this session, at this event. Uh, and then we can fine fine tune that content for those folks. So we're seeing a decent number of product marketers here. We're seeing a lot of people who are either in managerial or leadership roles. That, that's a great turnout. Perfect. Thank you, guys. I'll take this off uh, for now, but we'll come back to it because uh, this is what's going to help us further uh, fine tune what we're doing here. And um, let me, I mean, effectively, this is something that, in fact, the SaaS Insider team uh, made fun about um, on LinkedIn in the morning as well. Uh, I want to welcome you all to a virtual event that's about virtual events. And uh, I'm a self-proclaimed virtual event expert and I tell you how you can do better virtual events. It's just what's happening around the globe right now. I think over the past couple of uh, months and ever since COVID happened, everyone's been talking about do more webinars, do more Zoom calls, do more events. Uh, kind of want, want to bust the myths here right now today. Uh, also talk about how, uh, you know, one, one very big uh, takeaway here that we all should have uh, is that for SaaS marketers, events is not a virtual event is not field marketing essentially field marketing is a very different domain altogether field marketers have a lot of different skill sets they're looking into different uh, objectives and ROIs. whereas a virtual event is more of a mechanism it's more of a playbook more of a tactic that every marketer in the SaaS industry can leverage in one way or the other so the first thing i want to make sure that all of us get and you know take away from here uh, today is that a virtual event is not just for field marketers. Whether you are in demand gen or product marketing, content, social, community, uh, whatever it is you're doing, events can play a huge role in not just making your job a lot easier, but also accelerating your growth, uh, helping you achieve better results, and getting the entire pipeline accelerated in a massive, massive way without you looking at you know newer projects out there. And the whole reason why that, that matters to us today is because uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, marketing teams and companies everywhere just focus a lot more uh, on the wrong kind of metrics and not essentially uh, focus on building the right kind of engagement with their customers, uh, focus on building the right kind of relationships with them. Whether it's uh, you know one team or the other, we're all looking at massive numbers. Uh, and the whole concept of the lead generation pipeline for a B2B SaaS company, that that concept is now much more of a dying concept. We are seeing across the board uh, from a lot of marketers that costs are rising e everywhere. 
uh, demand generation uh, costs are getting more and more higher. Your conversion rates are dropping. Almost every person that I know of is aware of the fact that the moment they sign up for an ebook, they're going to get bombarded with automated emails. And that's not a great thing because when that starts happening, essentially, you, you know, your customers are already aware of the fact that you're going to run certain sequences and automation pipelines on them, and they're not very comfortable with that. Uh, more importantly, uh, what we have seen is that, you know, uh, a huge part of the buyer's journey is getting completed even before they sign up as a lead on your website or your platform, right? Uh, this was a survey done by Gartner about a year back where they said close to 84% of the people uh, who have made a pur purchasing decision, they've already researched the company, their competitors, their case studies, the works, right? So um, if you think that as a SaaS marketer, my uh, entire process starts from lead generation as the first step, I think you're drastically wrong over there because the, the entire step of a customer filling up a form is a lot more mature now than what it was 10 or 15 years ago. So customers are no longer, or prospects are no longer fill up a, filling up a form because they want to know more about a company. They're doing it because now they've already researched enough that they want to finally get onto the decision-making stage. Whereas for us marketers, our entire process pipeline automation starts from the form filling stage. Uh, that, that's, that's for me to basically drive home the point that essentially uh, the entire lead generation aspect uh, and how we think about it is no longer as relevant as it used to be about five or 10 years back. Um, and at the same time, over the last one, one and a half years, we've we've seen plenty of uh, companies, plenty of uh, marketing teams doing endless number of uh, webinars, right? Uh, because, because webinars seem like the most easiest way for us to get that high quality, uh, high value B2B customer or prospect into our pipeline. Uh, we'll, we'll do a nice enough webinar. We'll have 100 and 200 odd leads come into the pipeline. We'll start sending them automated email sequences, sending them, uh, you know, start nurturing them. We'll start scoring them. And eventually at some point they'll convert into customers. Uh, but that's also not working. Uh, and we've seen so many uh, webinars coming up here and there. Uh, I, th I think death by webinar generally became like uh, a major concept uh, over the last one year or so. Yeah, I think that's more visible. Perfect. So uh, effectively, uh, what I'm trying to get at is that you've got a playbook in front of you. You're writing blogs, uh, you're creating eBooks, you're doing webinars, uh, you're running automated uh, email sequences, uh, you're trying to nurture your prospects through the entire pipeline, uh, you're running ads. All of those things are great, but they are the playbook that we have been running for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, what, what can virtual events really do uh, to make all of that a lot, a lot better for you. That, that's what we're trying to cover here in this session today. Uh, I'll also cover a brief outlay of what an event pipeline should look like. What, what do virtual events really look like in, uh, in terms of how they actually get executed and uh, what exactly you can do uh, to, to kind of um, make it happen a lot easier and a lot faster uh, for your entire company and for your entire team out there. Uh, another reason why... Uh, not just me personally, but as a company, as an organization, we are gung-ho and we are very actively uh, advocating virtual events is because uh, there have been plenty of uh, discussions and surveys that we've done in the past as well. Uh, one such survey is where we kind of interviewed more than a thousand uh, B2B buyers. And this just happened about a couple of months back. Uh, what we observed there was that close to half of the people, and, and this is purely coming from an unbiased survey, uh, close to half of the people who said that they attended an event over the last year or so, they ended up buying from that organization. Uh, now, 50% is you look at any other channel or any other marketing campaign that you've done, and you know that 50% is a huge, huge number in terms of conversion rate. Uh, it just it just beats uh, every other tactic, and you know uh, there's, there's no reason to think why any other campaign would be a lot more effective uh, in comparison to a virtual event or a summit like this. Uh, the whole reason there is because we we are done with uh, the same automated email sequences we are done with the same blogs and the same ebooks that we've seen everywhere uh, an event really is an amalgamation of the best influencers the best knowledge the best content the best relationships i can build and more importantly it puts a face to the name uh, that i'm looking at right so instead of getting john from uh, airmeet as the person that i'm connecting with i actually see who that person is in real life and that helps me build a much more uh, credible uh, opinion of that organization that person as well so all of that is part of why uh, even this survey uh, showed us that you know it's it's uh, it's very relevant as a channel uh, as a campaign for you to kind of drive virtual events forward and use them uh, to better nurture your uh, prospects better acquire new prospects 
at the same time if you have existing customers pipeline uh, building better relationships with them and help in using that for your account expansions all of that is part of what we have researched what we've done over the last couple of years as well uh, it's 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 a proven fact so what i what i'm essentially trying to say here is that uh, virtual events are hot uh, they're here to stay right and um, if you look at the trajectory of how uh, content marketing as a field has evolved uh, you'll see that over the last uh, 10 to 15 years we've seen uh, blogs coming up this is blogs were the first big thing in back in 2005 uh, then blogs gave way to smaller uh, tweetable content which is what twitter was all uh, about right uh, from there we saw the rise of social media we saw graphic visuals becoming more and more popular than came video and podcasts and webinars uh, my my big belief here is that the next 10 years are going to be entirely dedicated to uh, virtual events virtual summits and conferences as a marketing channel this is drastically different from what field marketing essentially is about uh, also it's also um, a way to think from uh, first principles when when you sit down back at the drawing table right and you say what is it that i can do that brings my customers together much closer to me what can i do to create unique insightful content uh, without the added overhead what can i do to uh, attract better influencers and better mentors and the industry leaders uh, so that they at least hear about my brand my company my product if all of these things are your objectives then there's nothing uh, better as a solution than a virtual event or virtual conference and that's uh, kind of what we're trying to drive home as a concept here right uh, i know uh, there are a couple of you out there who are kind of like moving your heads left and right and saying uh, i don't believe you it's not possible um you know you're probably just saying it because there's a vested interest here uh, i know there's a lot of objections i want to take those buts and ifs and why nots uh, head on uh, so if anyone wants to kind of uh, drop an objection or why you think a virtual event won't work uh, you can just post that in chat and i'll definitely pick it up and i'll kind of address that head on uh, the most common reasons that i hear from a lot of b2b marketers and saas marketers out there is that um, you know we, we just don't have the team or the expertise to do that uh, we don't have any event marketers in the team we don't have field marketers in the team and that's the first thing that i've been trying to tell you on this session here uh, essentially a virtual event is just an extension of whatever you're doing from a content perspective so you might have a content marketer you might have a social media manager uh, you might have a product marketer all of these three people can essentially do a really good virtual event for you uh, you don't need, really need to start uh, from a large scale conference or a summit that takes like half a year to pull up uh, you can always start with much smaller social webinars so to speak right and social webinar is something that we have been actively talking about a lot uh, webinars by by nature by definition whatever webinars we have seen over the last 5 or 10 years uh, they're boring right uh, they're boring because uh, i might be doing anything else on the side and it's just one person or two people talking among themselves uh, whereas a social webinar it really is uh, you know something that that brings people together in a much more richer and mo much more engaging fashion so for example uh, we could pull some of you guys uh, onto the stage here if you want to raise your hand uh, it just makes it a more engaging experience right after this session is over you could all go back i mean of course you've got a packed session now uh, but you could always go back to our social lounge you can interact on virtual tables there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, on a virtual event that's not possible uh, on a regular webinar and uh, that that's one of the most common objections uh, dance sharing we don't have an audience of 5000 people so nobody would show up that's a very very common objection uh, to be honest not all organizations not all products need a scale of 5000 people you don't really need to make it into a blockbuster conference or summit a lot of successful events are in the range of 100 to 250 or people uh, you know because a lot of times that's all you need to have a much more ripple effect of sorts so maybe i get together i mean just using this as an example um, if you see kabir here in the chat box kabir uh, is leading our partnerships and when he launched the affiliate program for a meet what he did was he hosted an event a small virtual event with just one session and one networking event uh, on affiliate marketing for saas companies we got a couple of good uh, influencers, a couple of good speakers on that platform, and we had like 150 odd people uh, coming onto that event. All those 150 folks were essentially affiliate marketers, and that's how we kickstarted the entire affiliate program, right? So that's just one example how uh, whatever it is that you're doing right now can be amplified in its impact, in its ROI, in its scalability and profitability by using virtual event as the medium to do that, right? Maybe you're doing product marketing and you really want to think about uh, hey, how, how do I engage with my customers better? How do I do better customer advocacy? Uh, can I get, uh, you know, a bunch of my customers together and take product feedback from them? Uh, can we improve uh, product adoption here, right? All of those things can be really, really addressed pretty well uh, if you do, uh, if you bring virtual events uh, into the kind of the mainframe of what you're doing right now. 
yeah i see a couple more uh messages here on the chat what's the minimum viable audience size for a virtual event uh, there is no real magic number, to be honest here. Uh, and the reason is de it depends entirely on what your use case is. We've seen a couple of um, you know uh, cohort-based educational courses where uh, they have done smaller events of 30 to 50 people. And that resulted in massive revenue for them. Because what they're essentially trying to do is convert these 50 people into their students. Uh, at the same time, there are all sorts of uh, you know enterprise customers that you want to attract. Uh, or, or you have a mid-market segment that you're trying to target there. Uh, anywhere between 100 to 500 seems like a very good number. We do a ton of events uh, here at Ameet from, from a marketing perspective. Not all events have 1,000 plus participation, but they do tend to have a significant impact on our pipeline, on our uh, lead generation, on our revenue, and you know all the metrics out there. So uh, it really depends on how you want to try it out. Uh, but don't, don't be bound by the fact that a good, successful conference requires that minimum 5,000 participation. It just doesn't, right? Uh, so with that, uh, I want to quickly jump into how, uh, what are the different types of events that you guys can think of, uh, how best to execute on those events. And uh, we will look at a you know, very quick, short playbook that we have developed internally here that you guys can probably follow and uh, use it for, your, uh, for launching your first virtual event. Uh, another, I mean, just, just to look at this slide that you guys are seeing on the screen right now, a virtual event is not just one thought leadership uh, webinar session of sorts. There are all sorts of different things that you could do here, right? So product marketers, if you're out there, you can do a lot of pro product demos. You can do customer roundtables. Uh, for a lot of demand gen folks, you can do all sorts of uh, thought leadership events. You can do matchmaking events. Uh, you can do conferences and flagship uh, summits throughout the year. Uh, training seminars work really well for organizations and products that require uh, product trainings for their customers. HRs have been using uh, town halls and internal meetings quite frequently as well. So there's all sorts of different types of things you can do when you have a platform that's really flexible enough uh, to be able to support your uh, virtual events, right? So it goes a, a step further than just looking at a webinar and that's being hosted on you know another video-based platform. Uh, I'll just take a quick pause here. If there are any questions, uh, we can take that. If anyone wants to come onto the stage, hey, Vikrant. Hey, Nishal, um, thanks. This is this is like super informative. I think a couple of questions you've already covered. Um, I think you had like a great preemptive streak, streak there um, because we had a couple of questions talking about um, what exactly is a social webinar? Never heard about it before. Uh, if you can throw some light on that. Absolutely. Let's pick that up first. So essentially webinars, uh, I, I feel they're very boring. They're, they're dead in nature, right? It's essentially one or two people who are talking amongst themselves. They don't even have any clue of whether someone's listening to them or not. Uh, whether someone is, you know, it, it's kind of like I might be watching one webinar and reading a blog on the side and still doing my own work, right? Uh, more importantly, webinars in general, they allow for zero interactivity between the audience and the speakers and also between the audience members, right? So if there are 100 people attending a webinar, how do I meet those 100 people? How do I talk to them? Is that even important or not? If it's just a broadcast broadcast style, uh, you know, distribution of content, then it's not a lot better than, let's say, a radio broadcast. A social webinar essentially brings this entire aspect of building relationships into the webinar experience. So on a social webinar, I could meet other attendees. I could meet other uh, speakers backstage. I could bring someone on the stage, and that makes it a more lively experience, right? So for example, as a host, you're coming in and going out. I could just make someone else in the audience a speaker right now. And a couple of folks can join us on stage as well. That's what a social webinar essentially is. Absolutely. And we do have uh, Lipika who wants to, uh, who's raised her hand. I think she wants to ask something. So I'm just going to bring her on, on stage. Let's do that. Uh, hi. Hi, Nishal. Can you hear me? Yes, Lipika. How are you? Yeah. Hi, hi Vikran. Uh, so, hi. Uh, my question here is like, uh, so we are B2B SaaS company and uh, we are trying to, uh, like, you know, market our. Uh, I would say position our brand actually. So uh, virtual events, which you mentioned, okay, uh, as uh, I mean, uh, the like, how do you organize those? So should I get my tech team uh, talking about the uh, departments they are working on and showcase their, uh, you know, the product and services they are working on, those kind of events you're talking about? So, so there are a whole range of events that you could probably think of, right? Uh, now I'm assuming that you want to create uh, awareness in a new market. Uh, where your brand is probably not as recognized as you would want it to be right now. If that's the case, you just need to understand who your target audience is, what are their interest areas. 
and what you can do is you can reach out to a couple of uh, people who are influencers who are thought leaders who are the experts in that industry you get them all together you host a couple of events which are all about distributing the right kind of knowledge so i'm assuming okay let's just take an example if you're in the space of uh, b2b productivity software what you could do you, you could get a couple of uh, hr folks you could get of cios and you know digital transformation folks together uh, have knowledge based thought leadership events and also partner with a couple of uh, complementary companies in the space uh, organizations which may have the right set of audience that you want to target and if you partner with them you essentially tell them hey i'm hosting this event where i'm going to be getting 100 to 200 odd people together they're all uh, you know high stake decision makers from uh, enterprise organizations would you want to be a sponsor at this event if you get 5 or 10 partners to say yes to that sponsorship you don't need to charge them money you just ask them hey why don't you distribute my event through your email list why don't you talk about my event on your social media channel and they already have the customers and the audiences that you need to kind of target and address your five partners are going to help you market your event and your five or 10 speakers who are already experts and well known in that industry are going to help you market your event everyone who comes through their networks and through their channels to your event is a prospective target audience for you and when all of them see your brand your folks your sales head uh, your marketing folks your ceos in front of the ex industry experts and leaders uh, talking about the right kind of things that they also want to relate to automatically two things happen a your brand authority and credibility goes up and number two all those people who you wouldn't have been able to target otherwise are now suddenly within your reach because they were marketed to by the people who are already experts in that industry so that's that's the exact reason why it works and uh, i think if you're looking for the exact implementation process of an event that's exactly what i'm going to cover next uh, you know within a couple of minutes okay that's great thanks nishal thank you so much yeah. thanks lipika uh, vikram i think we can just uh, quickly go to the next slides and uh, i think that will clear up a lot of doubts great i'm going to share the slide yeah we can perfect all right uh, if it's properly visible to everyone uh, can i get a couple of thumbs up i'll actually try and zoom into it all right okay so i'll uh, quickly take you guys through this uh, what we're talking about here essentially is the process to make events a marketing channel for you right so how do you execute uh, events through the marketing team and not through an events team right it starts with planning we'll go to the depths of it next comes your content a bifurcation here between outreach and distribution then comes execution and then the roi the roi is what we're all waiting for and and my entire prerogative here is this whatever roi you're trying to achieve from your other marketing channels or campaigns can be done a lot better through a virtual event we'll go quickly into the steps for each of these uh, elements and then you know if anyone has any questions i can take those uh, as well so essentially planning involves setting up your objectives and goals deciding the format and scale of your event which is exactly what we discussed just now the format could be multiple different types of town halls thought leadership sessions matchmaking etc scale has to be dependent on how you calculate roi whether 50 people is good enough or you need 500 people to attend that event your agenda your programming uh, who your target audience really is what's their demographics their geography their interest areas their titles their organizations and what's going to be your engagement plan on this event you can't just hope to put 100 people together uh, five speakers together and hope that they all have a good time you have to plan for good engagement because that's the only way you get the good roi that you're looking forward to when it comes to content since essentially you know your topics your copy uh, designing your banners uh, a small web page landing page and your social media and email copy essentially what you'll see here is that this is what your content marketing team is already doing uh, they just need a different topic to work on now outreach is where most people are scared uh, but take it from me it's it's not that difficult a process you need to reach out to the right kind of people who could become your potential speakers your sponsors partners uh, or your community associations where you want to kind of go out and distribute your content uh, these are what's going to create real value on your entire event uh, and it's it's fairly easy if you are in the business of uh, you know building relationships talking to people you could find these folks on twitter linkedin wherever you you know wherever they're present as per your target audience distribution is your marketing plan definitely focus on this because with a very bad i mean with, with a not so solid rock solid distribution plan uh, you will end up with an event where you have worked really hard 
uh, you've got the right set of speakers and topics and everything together, but you don't have enough people attending that event. It all comes down to how you distribute your event, right? So what kind of email lists you have, your social media, uh, your ads, uh, community posting is if you already know that your potential target audience uh, is active in a Slack group or a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group, uh, you can be there. CRM marketing is if you're doing this for your existing prospects, your existing customers or leads, you want to accelerate them, uh, you know, expand their accounts or kind of uh, get more upsells and cross sells from them or referrals from them. Execution essentially captures hosting, moderation, uh, engagement plan, which we discussed earlier. Uh, are you looking at booths and networking as a specific session as well? It can really add a layer of social, uh, you know, the social aspect to your uh, webinar and event. And what's your key ROI that you're trying to drive here, right? Are you trying to generate fresh leads from this event? Do you want to get more social media shares? Do you want to get more referrals? Uh, or do you want to create unique content that you can, you know, later on use on your uh, blog, your videos, uh, and your social media? And then comes the ROI part. The ROI is everything that happens post event. Uh, there's a ton of unique, insightful content that you can repurpose now. You can you know, convert each of those sessions into a video, into a blog, into a short snippet that can be published on social media. You can look at the leads you've generated, the pipeline you've generated from here, what revenue that, that amounts for. Uh, now, ABM is, uh, is, a, is a big way a lot of uh, B2B companies attract uh, or close enterprise sales. Uh, an event plays a huge role in accelerating your entire account-based marketing funnel. Uh, because you could directly target the right kind of organization that you want to bring on and interact with here, right? You could also get a ton of um, customer and you know partner advocacy content, something that can be leveraged on social media, testimonials, the works, right? And every person who joins your event as a speaker is now essentially one of your close relationships. And those can be leveraged to get better referrals, uh, better insights. And you know those, those people will definitely help you get inroads into the kind of organization that you're thinking of uh, cracking so far. So that that's the entire pipeline of um, uh, of virtual events for marketing that we are looking at, and uh, of course I could talk for hours about this, but but the whole idea is to give you guys a glimpse. And uh, hey, Vikrant. Uh, hey, Nishal. I'm I'm really sh sorry for cutting this short, but we are like just about um, kind of getting out of time. Uh, but what I, what I've done is there are a couple of more questions that are in the uh, in the Q and A section. Uh, what we've done is we've taken taken them all down, and it'd be great if you can answer them on Twitter. Uh, we'll tag the folks as well, so they'll get a response to a couple of questions they had regarding CAC and regarding uh, you know how it works with uh, in in comparison to other channels, how how uh, event marketing works. Um, so we've noted it down. We will do that. Uh, we'll take the conversation over on Twitter um, a little later. If that Dark, works, let's do that. Thanks. Thanks a ton uh, for the session, Nishal. This was like super, super kind of um, like a wow moment for me as well. And I'm sure everybody else had a great time. Uh, we'll just jump on to the next session now. Uh, we have some really, really nice speakers uh, coming ahead of us as well. Perfect. Absolutely. Just doing a final poll to see if you know <laughs> people enjoyed the session or not. Absolutely. I think All it's right. like a straight up 100%. Yeah, Thanks. good for my validation, right? This is what I'm going to use yeah. <laughs> later as a screenshot in, in some internal presentation. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. See you guys in the next sessions. Bye-bye.